sis lies they tell and you're gonna be the one that's in a mix-up sick at work not being able to fulfill your responsibilities looking dope on the unemployment line sis don't do it don't do it hi guys welcome back to our channel your favorite place for halls home decor and all things homemaking if you are joining us for the first time welcome and for those of you returning we appreciate your support this week's video is a part two to our video which i will link here it is entitled having plastic surgery in the Dominican Republic, I share with you my full experience. What I wanted to do was a part two that will share with you all the things you need to prepare for prior to having plastic surgery outside of the country. Stay tuned. If you are checking out this video, it says one of two things. Either you have been thinking or playing around with the idea in your head about having plastic surgery outside of the country and you're just weighing your options or you have fully made the decision that yes, I am making a decision to have a cosmetic procedure outside of the country and I just wanna get some tips on some things that I need to prepare myself for. Either way, congratulations on choosing you because there are a lot of people out there that are number one, going to judge you. Number two, going to tell you that you don't need to do it. Number three, they're gonna tell you that you don't need to spend that kind of money. But guess what? This is a decision that you are making for you. Keep that in mind. This is a decision you are making for you, no one else. So with that being said, going under the knife, whether you are in your country or choosing to venture out, it is a risk so be sure that this is not a spontaneous decision that you haven't really thought through make sure that at this point if you're watching this video you've already joined a couple support groups over the social media platforms facebook has several um cosmetic procedure groups specific to the surgeon of choice if the surgeon is popular enough check it out you don't have to always comment in there. You can just take a look at some of the before and afters, listen to some people's experiences, and then this will kind of better prepare you to wrap your mind around what the experience is going to be. However, this video, I'm sharing with you 10 things that I definitely wish I could have found in one place that you need to know prior to leaving the country so you feel that you are prepared for this cosmetic procedure. Number 10, be weary of people who are sharing these opportunities where if you pay two to three or four hundred dollars to get pushed to the front of the line when you are trying to get a quote from more popular surgeons now i am speaking specifically from the dominican republic I, again, I will link my video here. This is a video where I share with you all the details on how I made the decision to go to the Dominican Republic to have a cosmetic procedure. I've also had cosmetic procedures in America as well, but I'm sharing here what it looks like to do it outside of the country. Be wary of those that are telling you that they can get you a quote within 48 hours if you give them two or three hundred dollars. Now, I did not do this, but I do know a couple people that did and come to find out it was a scam or come to find out it ended up taking just as long as it would have taken for someone else who did not pay that two or three hundred dollars there are some areas where i will tell you listen do not go cheap on the money and you'll hear me i mean on the product and you'll hear me go through that as i go through the top 10 but this right here is definitely something you can miss out on and i promise you you will get the quote you want okay Even number nine now i know i mentioned this in the other video but this is big whatever your surgeon quoted you double it if not triple it if you can because there are many things that are going to go into the investment of this procedure having the actual procedure done is only maybe 40 to 50 percent of what you're going to spend overall for example and i'll go into more details as i get to number one um and keep in mind this isn't in any particular order all 10 are just as important but with this one, you know, you have your recovery home, you have your flights, your round trip flights, um, you have your post-op massages, any of your post-op care, any of those materials, your bespoke products like your um, Faha, your stage one, your stage two, your waist trainer, that's really like your stage three, right? All of those cost money. So don't think about, okay, my my um, surgeon quoted me $1,500. That's all I have to worry about. No, that's the least of your issues. Like $1,500 is just 40% um, tops 
of what you're gonna have to pay. There's several other uh, fees that you're going to have to pay that are going to add up. So please keep in mind, if you can triple it, then you're really in a good budget to get optimal results. Number eight, listen to the pre-op instructions from your surgeon. They may vary depending on the surgeon, okay? They may vary, but listen to your surgeon's pre-op instructions. Not what your friend told you because they had surgery five years ago. Not what you saw in a Facebook group from another surgeon. Listen to your specific surgeon's instructions. This is so important because they will tell you typically um i know from mine and again it may have changed but this is from when i got it done back in 2018 it's three years now they told us um i think you could you had to stop smoking three months prior you had to start on a vitamin regimen about 30 to 45 days prior to surgery and that included but wasn't li limited to um vitamin d uh iron pills i took chlorophyll to bring my hemoglobin up um i was drinking beet juice quite a bit again to bring up my hemoglobin all of these things that they give you they give you a list of things to take and you know again this is where you could save a little bit of money not say oh i'm not gonna take any of the vitamins i'm i'm good i know i'm healthy no you want to find ones that are on sale do your research look on amazon um you know you don't have to get $40 iron pills. You can find iron pills that are by a reputable brand, but maybe through Walmart. I think Walmart has like Nature's Promise, I believe. Um, I had gotten a lot of my vitamins through there and they were very affordable. Vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, I think it was, is it F12? The, several of the, I, the vitamins, I would say I got, if not all of them from Walmart and they were very affordable. You don't need to get top shelf vitamins um, per se, you just want to make sure that you're looking at the listings of um, the percentage of daily value and make sure that they align with what your surgeon is suggesting. If your surgeon tells you to stop smoking, stop smoking. If you can't stop smoking, no problem, don't get surgery. Period. If your surgeon tells you to not smoke because smoking has to do with your lungs, your lungs need to be very, very strong and it also creates your, um, it, it results in your blood being super thin and you bleed out a lot faster and you lose a lot of blood if you are still smoking out, um, within the time frame that they tell you that you need to refrain from smoking. If you have previous existing conditions, for me, I have hyperthyroidism. With me, they had to do a lot of additional testing in the Dominican Republic. I'll tell you, they were very thorough before they approved me for that surgery because of the fact that I had hyperthyroidism. They also made sure that I went very early in the morning so that I could take my medication. Same thing I'm sure that they do for people that have diabetes. I don't know what the limitations are, but they expect your numbers to be a certain, they expect your levels to be at a certain point. They will tell you that prior to coming to the Dominican Republic. Do not waste your time. If they tell you the BMI must be at 34 and you know your BMI is at 36 and you think to yourself, okay, well, I know I'm already coming down in weight, so I'm going to do my, my workouts. I'm going to get myself down to my BMI of 34. I'm going to um, schedule my surgery six months out. Cool. You decide now that you have a new love for donuts and pizza or you have a subscription to three gyms but you're not going to any of them that's fine sis i'm not here to judge i'm a foodie just like you however if your bmi is not down to 34 don't get your behind on that plane you need to reschedule because you know when you get there and the surgeon refuses to do surgery now you're jumping on social media platforms saying that you think this surgeon is the worst surgeon ever. They didn't give you, they gave you the wrong information, blah, blah, blah. When it clearly states in the pre-op directions that you must, I mean instructions that you must have a BMI of 34. And it may be different. Some people may say 33, some may say 35, whatever it is. 
But if you know you are at 36 or 37, guess what? They're going to turn you away. And you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to waste your, your um, PTO time if you are working and you're not an entrepreneur. If you don't work for yourself, fine. But if you know that you have now gone on FMLA in order to get this procedure, make sure that you set yourself up for success and follow the directions. Because if not, you're going to get turned away. And what I saw a lot of people doing, personally saw them doing, is now they get desperate. They're already in the Dominican Republic. They paid all this money. They've taken their PTO. They get turned away and now they start shopping within the hospital, going to all these different surgeons to find somebody who will accept their 34 or th I mean their 35 or 36 BMI because they didn't meet the expectations of the surgeon of choice. And then they get a surgeon that wasn't their initial choice. If it's not your initial choice, you're not going to get the results you were looking for. It's now a toss up. Because you're getting a surgeon that might be less popular and might be less qualified. You don't know that. But all of your, your, your um, research that you've done in the past few months has now been null and void. Right? Because the person that you've chosen now has nothing to do with any of the Facebook groups you were joining. They're not going to give you the results. You're, it's a risk now. You don't know if, it's, if they're going to be able to give you the results that you were looking for with the initial surgeon that you fell in love with. So follow the pre-op instructions. Number seven, figure out your post-op services prior to having your surgery. Because the last thing you want to think about after surgery is trying to shop around and find the best post-op massage place that will do lymphatic massages that will um you know remove fluid from your from your body once your once your drains get removed you will need if you get excess fluid which typically you will when you do have aggressive procedures like they do in the dr compared to america you will definitely need someone to excise those fluids you need to make sure you find that prior to having your surgery you don't want to have to worry about that uh, post-op because that's just an additional stress for you another um, thing that you're going to want to figure out is the cost and make sure that you're adding that into your budget as well number six you want to figure out the recovery time that your surgeon quotes you and double it they are out there telling folks oh yeah you're gonna have a tummy tuck a breast reduction and um a bbl you'll be back to work in three weeks lies they tell sis lies they tell and you're gonna be the one that's in a mix-up sick at work not being able to fulfill your responsibilities looking dope on the unemployment line sis don't do it don't do it take that time and double it you'll thank me later number five research your recovery home there are several recovery homes to choose from, but I would highly suggest you research your recovery home. And this is the one service that I would say, even if you could go by referral, it's better. Um, I am not going to share the recovery home that I had. I had an amazing experience, in, experience there. I had no problems, but they don't pay me. So if you want to know the recovery home that I went to, I had a great experience. You can definitely follow us on Instagram. Shoot me a DM. I'm happy to share it. But I can't share it on here unless they're giving us a check. I mean, we have bills to pay around here. All right? This hair can't pay for itself. Let's just be honest. But um, do it by referrals. I would recommend that because sometimes... I would say to look at the reviews, but you got to take that with a grain of salt. You have to take it with a grain of salt because a lot of times... The women are complaining about things that they could have prevented. And the same thing goes for surgeons as well. A lot of them complain about things that they could have really prevented. It may have been um, precautions that they didn't take that resulted in that experience. But when you're doing your um, research, you're not only looking at the costs, right? Now, a lot of them, they're typically pretty competitive on costs. It's usually like a, a, you can do like... um. One, one room where it's just one bed in the room you're by yourself you could do a two bed or a three bed i don't know if they're doing more than that now again it's been three years for me since i had my procedure but they will also um typically bathe you they will feed you all meals 24 7 nurses um find out if the nurses are actually certified or is this just their cousin and them that they have coming here to help clean up like the same people that's cleaning the floors are going to be helping you with your your um 
with giving you blood thinners and making sure you take your medication Ooh, sis that's a little sketchy um i don't know but um you know you want to make sure that all the meals are included that they do recognize if you have any type of dietary um restrictions like maybe you're me personally i'm allergic to red meat so i had to make sure that they were willing to do chicken and fish um you know maybe you may be a vegan some of them may tell you um if you, you you'll have to bring your own things or you may have to pay extra because you know like vegan might be more costly for them i don't know if like you know especially if you don't want them to use butter and blah blah blah, blah. so just make sure you figure that out with them make sure that they're in a safe environment um make sure that they have a driver included right so they can take you to and from your pre post stop appointments day of surgery so forth and so on um you just want to make sure that your recovery home is really going to be a good and safe place for you because they are really your lifeline for you know 10 days or 12 days post-op no one else so if anything goes wrong with you they're the ones that are going to be contacting your surgeon they're the ones to make sure your prescriptions get fulfilled at the pharmacy um they're the ones to call in to see if a phlebotomist needs to come and take blood because for me i had to have two blood transfusions so i really relied on them because i don't remember a lot of the things that happened so you have to make sure that you have a really reliable reliable um recovery home that can handle all of those type of situations number four when it comes to your recovery home make sure that you have budgeted some money to tip these folks they are doing all types of personal things they are all in your personal space they are helping you wipe yourself they're helping you sit on the toilet let's get real sis because if you come in here to hear the truth i'm here to give you all of the tea they are here to help you wipe yourself they are here to help you wash yourself all your private areas you're not going to be able to do that for the first couple days after surgery you're going to be pretty out of it they're going to be there to check on you if you're having any additional issues you need to make sure that you've put some money aside i'm not saying you got to tip each of them a hundred dollars let's not be extra but you know tip the nurses have money for the the, the um massage therapists at the end of your stay to give them a little extra change because they are giving you massages once sometimes twice a day right also the cooks um also the person that's kind of managing the whole space on a day-to-day -day basis the driver these people um you know they don't make a lot of money so you know it's not that you have to give them that much but you know give them give, give them some money you know because this is something that they definitely take they, they do a really good job at and for those that don't do a good job sis then they don't get any money that's fine because i didn't tip all my nurses there was one in particular i didn't really like her at all her attitude was gross i'm always here to tell you the truth her attitude was gross and so she didn't get a tip and she saw me tip the other ladies and was looking at me and i was looking at her and she was looking at me and i was looking at her bye sis you don't get anything Okay, I know I was a little bit petty, but I mean, she kind of deserved it. I just didn't like her attitude. I'm sorry, guys. I'm such a nice person, but please don't try to play me and then look for a tip. No sis. Um, okay, so uh, don't forget to invest in other items that will help you optimize your results. Your procedure is not the only thing. Yes, your surgeon will slay, but you need the other tools to help m optimize your slayage. Okay, so with that being said, you need your stage one garments. Now, typically your stage one garments will come with, I'm trying, I'm going to show you guys some of them. Typically your stage one garments will come with your procedure. They'll usually itemize that in your quote. I don't have my stage one garment. Um, I don't know. I think I RIP that thing. It was like, it was, it needed to be RIP, but your stage one garment, um, usually lasts, I would say like the first month month and that uh, yeah maybe four to six weeks after your procedure then you have the holy grail which is your phase two garment um guys this thing was taken in so much if you take a look at the back it was taken in on the top it was taken as you can see here this is the part that has no compression because that's where the buck goes but i wash this thing every single day 
because I wore it for at least 22 hours a day. The only time I took it off is when I was getting a massage or if I was taking my shower. Um, and usually when I took my shower is when I would throw it in the wash. And then by the time I get out the shower, I throw it in the dryer, relax for about 30 more, 40 minutes, enjoy that freeness and entrap myself right back into this bondage. Okay, and that's how I was able to get my results. And this is my stage two, as I said, my stage two Faha. Um, again, if you want the name of the place that they do not give me a check, honey. So I will definitely, if you want to follow me on Instagram and DM me there, I'm happy to answer. But I will tell you, I got this taken in at least eight times. So that's another thing you have to really budget for a seamstress as well, because that is not free. My phase one garment was also taken in quite a few times because you that's how you get the best results you want to keep the compression 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 which helps keep down the swelling the other thing was my backboard and my this went in the front this was like my foam and it's like a really hard thing it's flexible but you put this on in the front you put this in the back this goes like right in the small of your back that's what gives you that good dip okay and i think these two things are like a hundred dollars just these two but again don't try to say, oh, I don't need the sis. I'm good. I'm just gonna, you know, use sanitary pads. No, sis. You need these and you need the sanitary pads. And you need the old school grandma long, thick sanitary pads. And you need to keep them in rotation. You can't use the same pads. Once they start to get flat, then it's time to get rid of them. They need to be nice and puffy. That's what's gonna keep your compression going. And I know it seems like a lot, and trust me, I used to be so frustrated every single day having to pack myself into this thing, but I did it for five months, almost six months. I was dedicated, and you know how hot it was? I got it done in February. So that June, July, and August, when I was back at work and having to travel with all of that packed in, you know how hot it was? Okay, sis. And guess what? I did it anyway because I knew that I had certain results I was going for and I needed to keep that compression on so that my swelling could go down because it took a long time for my swelling to go down because I had so many procedures done. That was my top nine. My number one, which I do feel is the most important thing I want you to take away from this conversation is this is something you're doing for you nobody else no one else's opinions matter unless of course it's your doctor telling you you know this is not you're not a good candidate for the surgery here is why or here are the things you need to do in order to become a good candidate that's a different conversation but all of the naysayers oh you can do this naturally you don't need to you don't even need to have a big butt if that's why you gotta have a big butt everybody gotta be but sis that's what i want that's what i want so if that's something that you feel you want for you and you have a certain vision for your body, you know, as long as it's within healthy measures and it's not like something that's becoming an addiction, then that's something that you are doing for you. And in the moment, no one else matters because this is something that you're doing to make yourself happy. Now, last thing, I know a lot of you guys are um, asking to see like a live, so live look of what my results are. Um, I'll show you that right now. Um, Cause I, I don't know if some people think I Photoshop my pictures. I don't really have time for that. So like, Cause if I was gonna Photoshop it, like I'd definitely make my waist small. Like no shade, come on guys. All right, let me show you what the full results look like. Okay, y'all. Thank you guys for staying with us until the end. I did not expect this video to be so long, but I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I appreciate all of your support. The first video did so well. I really wanted to share a part two with you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, we love you so much for watching. We appreciate your support. Until next time. Cause I don't even want your love, want your love